G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Matt, Jacks and Balls. I'm out here at Baronia Bowls Club today and it is a nice warm day so if I'm sitting there flicking my face it's because the flies are giving me the irrits. Uh, now on today's episode we've got part two of our coaches clinic with the number three ranked player in Australia at the moment, Thor Shannon. Uh, we're also off to Ararat VRI. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing their shirt. Now, uh, the VRI club or the Ararat VRI club is pretty special to me. My grandfather uh, is a life member of that club. He's no longer able to bowl. So I travel up there one, at least once a year, but especially once a year for their annual triples tournament. So I've just come back from there. Uh, so I've got an interview with uh, Shane Briggs from there, which is a bit of fun. So uh, let's get underway. Now, just a quick reminder again, it is very helpful and very useful to me uh, at Matt's Jackson Bowls if you can actually give the thumbs up to the YouTube clips. Um, if you're uh, a member of YouTube or you've got a sign in for YouTube, become a subscriber or jump on the Facebook page, uh, Matt's Jacks and Balls, and like the page and keep in touch with all the news, Friday funnies, etc. Um, and you're basically kept up to date with everything that's going on. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Thanks, guys. G'day everybody and welcome back to Coach's Corner for another episode. We've got Thor again and we're at Shep Park. Uh, again, we'll be doing interviews with people around the place for the Vic Open. So this is probably going to be episode two of the Vic Open special. Uh, now, what we're going to look at today with Thor is setting up a foundation for singles play and lead play in your pairs and your triples and, well, there's no fours this year, um, but setting things up how you would like and what best what is going to be best for you in your play so where do we start much fantastic all right so as as a leader um or as a singles player i'm big on establishing a foundation for me if i put my two bowls relatively in the area everything else seems to flow and seem to be systematic from there on yep. predominantly if you're doing your, your job and you're setting up a good foundation and opposition misses you can score multiple numbers yep. so it works for me so what i try to achieve is if I'm playing, for instance, down this way here, my very first bowl, I don't aim to nail the jack because it's very difficult to draw a toucher, as you can appreciate. Yeah. How many touches yeah. would you draw with the first bowl? Yeah, very, one in very rarely. One in 10, 15, 20. There you go. So for me, I don't aim to hit the jack my first bowl. I aim to always be two foot wide yep. or two feet behind. Yep. So potentially, if you draw a circle around here, I'd talk about this quarter here as being the hot spot, the sweet yep. spot. So if you come down here two foot wide, will be here, two foot behind, you're predominantly going to be here with the first bowl. So if you put a bowl here, and then you drew inside that with your second bowl, would you think this is a good end? Yeah, absolutely. You already started well there. You may get a 10 off your, off your skip up. Yeah. Don't forget though, if you happen to be a foot narrow to here, or two foot wide, or a foot short to three foot wide, you've actually got a three foot target. Yeah. You can be narrow by three feet or potentially. So you're three giving feet. yourself, you're giving yourself what? Just short of a meter? I'm giving myself roughly or, uh, a yard. So my yard yep. could be here, followed by. So almost a match length diameter around. I'm probably saying more. And the level yep. that we've seemed to come across is if you've got two bowls in an area, you're going to give your team an opportunity to actually hold pole position. And your second's got a luxury position where if you've got two bowls here, your second can come down this side. If he drags it or she drags it, you've got bowls in the hedge to start with. Yeah. And the law of probability means that you're going to probably have a higher prob probability of winning the game. Yeah, absolutely. In singles play, you've got the key position. So many people try to nail the jack, they end up being short down here. Yep. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, so yep. take the pressure off me by thinking beach ball. My jack is a three-foot beach ball. If I can get to the beach ball, my first ball, I can somehow improve my second ball, I like to think the game becomes a lot easier than stressing Yep, yep, absolutely. All right, well, let's go down the mat and we'll have a look. We'll cut back when we're down the other end. When you're on the mat, what are your thoughts? Have you already thought about what you're going to do even before you get on the mat, which is what I like to do? Yeah, fantastic. That's a very good question. For me, it's about visualising my shot before I play it. It's not about jumping on the mat and then going, okay, what am I going to do, brain? It's actually preempting my shot. So for me, my preparation would always be to stand stand back behind the mat, two metres behind the mat. I'm a big believer that the ball must be in the hand the same way. A lot of people change their grip, which could alter one inch down here, could be three feet down yes, there. Yep. So if I try to do the same thing every time, it makes 
the game a lot easier, trust me. Yep. So my bowl's in my hands, prep, prepare it nicely. Now, I know my bowl is going to be bending, so most people would aim at the boundary peg and work off that. So for this exercise, I'll aim to go to the boundary peg and try to finish behind the jack or between the jack and the ditch with the very first bowl. Yep, righto. Give it a go. And just so everyone knows, we are on the 21 metre mark. It doesn't look it, it's actually a very long green. So you've probably finished a bit behind where you'd want to be, but again, as we all know, that's not a bad spot. So it's, look, it's, it's narrow from where I want it to, so my mind is a fail. However, if you play the other hand, it'll be in the, in the area. The important thing now is making sure that you make the adjustment with your second bowl. Yep. Yep. That's pretty much where you want to be. Now, even though, even though you're a jack short, or a bowl short, I shouldn't say a jack short, you're probably a bowl or two short, you're still happy with that, even though you were narrow, which is, I mean, you've got to think, we've just jumped on the green, so we've had no warm-ups or anything, so it's... If your bowl's coming this way, it's in play, and you've got a bowl back here. They're not wasted bowls. They're in the game. Yep. As long as you're behind between the ditch and that with the first bowl, you're not going to be upset. For me, that'll be a tick and that'll be a dot, yep. which represents yep. then 65, 70%. If yep. you've got two ticks, you're 100%. Yep. So that's, that's primarily, and, and this is the one thing I've found. A lot of skips go crook. Oh, it's still short. Sorry, if you're that far short, it's, it's well and truly in play. Absolutely. It's all about putting bowls in the keyhole yep. and then establishing and allowing, the op allowing your teammates to obviously feed off that and improve off that. So that's not bad for... A, so we're, we're playing with two here at the moment. So on this one, we'll step up to four. I just want to walk through what your thought process is now. Same sort of thing. Your first two bowls are probably the most important in singles play anyway. Um, but now you've got the four. What? How does your thinking change or is it different ends you know, different strategy. Yeah, look, it's actually, I keep it very simple. I make sure that the first bowl is going to be somewhat in the area, yep. in the key area, you know, like what we said, two, three feet wide, bit behind, it could improve. And then you follow from then. But the first two generally for me would be foundation building. Put them as close as you can. Yep, yep. So right right on. That's not looking too shabby. What was that about having touches off your first bowl? <laughs> but that's still... That blocks the drive. That blocks the drive, yeah. Which is a question I was going to ask you, but I'll ask you in a minute after you put down your second. Because you'll probably adjust by this half a foot. All right, now I'm going, to, I'm going to quickly go up and change this head because I've got a question for you. Now, I've noticed there seems to be a massive tendency in people having to drive at that now. So if this was my second bowl, you tend to find, oh, he's got one on the jack, I've got to get it off. What's, what's your theory on that? Look, there's a lot of people that do have the big drive and do like to, to break the head, but I mean, the probability of that jack staying in with that weight is very low. So I, look, a lot of people are good at it. I think it's more for show. The actual effect is very minimal. I think if you were to play a controlled hit or sit shot, your ball stays on and you may actually move the jack back to your positive area. Yep. Yep. So, so you'd only play with what? So let's um, Because you're, you Keep the bowl on. So as a second now, you want to keep the bowl on and not lose your bowl. So my skipper might say, look, you're two down, but we want you to change the head. Or even in a singles game. More, more so singles game, because you're out here by yourself. And I know a lot of people would have a hot head and go, that's coming off. I'm putting ditch or bowl or d jack or bowl in the ditch. I'm getting rid of that because I don't like it sitting there. Look, I would always play just arriving weight. Just, just wait a metre on. Yeah, look, I'll show you. Half a metre. Go for it.
Mate, you couldn't have played that any better. But I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> but only a touch. So, again, now you're, now you're looking at two bowls sitting there. So now you generally, if you wanted to play a similar shot, you'd probably add, no, I'm not where I felt it at now, I'd probably add two feet now. Yeah. Two or three feet, keep the ball in the head all the time. So you're, you're pretty much, let's say you're three down. So you've got two behind the head and one that's... Sure. Let's a metre short. Two, two behind the head. Look, I'd be one to try to roll the ball through, but leave my ball in the head if I miss. Yep, right. It's all about maximising your bad shots are still good shots if they're still in the game. Yep. That's right. Yep. And Jack. Jesus. The joys of having somebody half decent that can do that off a whim. But then again, 24 hours a week of practice will do that for you, won't it? Oh, look, it's uh, the only good is what you put in, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and there's still more to go. All right, so that'll pretty much wrap it up for this coach's corner. Hopefully it gives everybody... And again, you've got to, you've got to adjust your area. So Thor's got a three... What, what do we say? A three-foot diameter around the jack? Predominantly there. Anywhere within three foot... That general image vision here. Yep, kind of like that. That is the area. And yep. if you can put all your bowls in a game of singles within that area, you'll probably find the opposition on a maximum best team might only have two inside that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's okay to go one or two down, knowing that you can grind back and get them back to the next end. And for beginners and, and first, second year bowlers, we're obviously stretching that out a little bit. I mean, your aim is, but... Can I tell you, I'd be saying to a brand new bowler, it's not about knowing that Jack is about getting the key area. So if you need to start with five feet wide, five feet, feet behind, successfully achieve that with four bowls, then pull back to four and yep. go four, four, then three, three, then two, two. Yeah. So stretch it out and then come in. Yeah. Don't, because I, I notice a lot of people say, you've got to be winning a bowls mat, which is 600 mil. You've got to be within a bowls mat and that's your grouping. Well, it's like, you're not going to get many beginners that are doing that. And you're going to see their confidence just go, oh, I just can't get it in that area. Well, even at the highest level, to achieve two bowls every end inside that, it's not possible. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're humans. We have errors. So, so again, so for beginners. Aim, aim for three or four feet roughly around the area. Five feet. And then make sure you can make adjustment off that and improve. And then improve and, and come in. The game's all about correction. Thank Thanks, you very mate. much, mate. I appreciate your help. My pleasure. And um, again, we're still at the Vic Open, so we'll be running around doing interviews with... Every man and his dog or every lady and his cat. <laughs> so we'll see you during the interviews. Thanks, guys. And welcome to this version of a bar bulls hit. You didn't know it was called Bar Bulls Hit, did you? Yeah, I thought it was bullshit myself. Yeah, well, there you go. So yeah. we've spent the day at Ararat VRI, a wonderful triples tournament up here. I, you know, if anyone watched my first episode, they'll understand that uh, VRI uh, was my grandfather's club. Or, you know, he, if he could still bowl, he'd still be here. Uh, but he can't, unfortunately. So... Uh, I came up last year, was welcomed with open arms, and I, I promised the guys, look, every year I'm going to come up and play this tournament. This year, uh, I had a decent run. Um, was with Shelley Holcomb and uh, Willie, uh, who's new to the club, isn't he, Willie? Yeah, Willie's been playing it first year for us, but yeah. um, Willie's been a great lead for us, and it's... It's sad that he's going to have to go home to Taiwan next week. So. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I wanted to interview Willie because he's probably the first Taiwanese uh, really immigrant that I've, I've seen play lawn bowls. And, geez, he plays lawn bowls really well. So we ended up uh, two wins, a draw and a loss. Uh, and I just want to welcome Briggsy from Ararat VRI. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, Matty. Had yeah, a good day? Good. Yeah, apart from playing you in the first game, that was great. That was yeah. a great game, I thought. Uh, you really enjoyed that game, didn't you? No, uh, probably not, no. Yeah, gave, we would have won by a lot more if you weren't playing, mate. So, yeah. But I was, so yeah. stiff. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can have a bit of luck sometimes, Matty. No, that's okay. We, we were putting the balls in, but you were just too good, mate. So. Yeah, no, I had a, I had a decent, decent day out again. Yeah. But, um, so look, uh, Briggsy's new. Briggsy doesn't know anything about my show. He hasn't watched it yet, so he doesn't know what's coming. No. 
But the uh, look, questions are pretty simple, and they're the same questions for pretty much everyone I have on the show. Cool. First of all, what got you into bowls? What started you with bowls, and what's been your bowls journey? Yeah, I started in Queensland with my old man. Yep. My old man got me into it in Pine Rivers, and uh, Pine Rivers is a big club in Queensland. They play the Premier League there, and all they play that. a heap of stuff up there. Yeah, 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 it's a big club, Pine Rivers, and yeah, that's where I started, and we end up moving back to Ararat because of my wife. So. And now I'm playing for Verroy, which I love playing. We've won a couple of flags with Verroy. Yep. And, um, yeah, we're going to win another flag this year. That's a bold statement. How many games left? Uh, doesn't matter, mate. We'll still win. Yeah, that's, I like that attitude, mate. Yeah. I like that attitude. The Bronia, we've dropped, we've dropped our last two games, sitting in third. We're only a game and a half behind, and I reckon we're a good chance this year. Good chance. Yeah. No, so, well. although I'm wearing my Mitchum top... Uh, because another Ararat boy from Mitchum, actually, uh, Nige Malcolm, was meant to come with me, but uh, unfortunately he made the regional semi-finals of the Pears. Oh, well, he would have been average playing today then. No, we don't, <laughs> apparently it's on tomorrow night, so yeah. I'll have words when we get back, Nigel. Um, so, yeah, so you got into it with your old man? Yeah, definitely, and Dad and I... Well, Dad ended up moving back to Ararat. Oh, he never was from Ararat, but he came back to Ararat when I was living here and he'd come to this club and, oh, we've started at Ararat Bowls Club. Yeah, yep, yep. And, um... Boo. Yeah, well, Ararat, <laughs> yeah. No. We ended up winning... We won one pennant flag with them and then we... Dad's an ex VRI driver. Yep, yep. So he was a train driver, so we decided to come to VRI and... We won a couple of flags here in the last couple of years, and last year we were a bit off the mark, but this year we're back in amongst it. So, yep. yeah. Now, what, uh, next question I normally ask, what keeps you in bowls? Oh, I think it'd be competitiveness. I used to play a little bit of footy and cricket, and, and, the, and I think just playing as a team sport. I love playing a team sport. Yep, 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 yep. I'm not an individual. I, People might think I might be, but I'm not. I love playing team sport. Yeah. Yeah, I love. I just love playing with a heap of guys and having a great time. Well, the good thing with bowls, it's sort of individual because you're the only one that's putting down those two bowls. Yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, it's, right. But yeah. then it's all, well, I missed those two bowls. And I had a similar experience yesterday that a couple of our guys were off and they're like, Maddie, come on, mate, help us out. And it was like, yep, yeah, righto, put it on. Yeah. And you kind of go, well, we're doing all right as a team, who cares? Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. I'm, like, I'm a skip at VRI, but I always say that if I'm the worst player on the rink and we win, I'm happy with that. Oh, hell yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just the way it is. It's a team game. If we win, that's all that matters. But based on your performance yeah. today, I would say you, you should be a lead. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. Ah, you bowled a lot better as a lead than you did a skip. Yeah, like, come yeah, on. I, I can't disagree, mate. Yeah, I, I was probably all over it as a lead and hopeless as a skip. So. The boys gave you the ass early. Definitely, mate. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely got the mixture right at the end, but yeah. yeah. Nah, fair enough. Yeah. Most, most embarrassing. Well, I've got two questions, but unfortunately, I need, I, I usually. Uh, interviewed two blokes and and the boys at VRI, Batesy's sitting in the background, he should be here as well, but he's chicken shit, yeah. uh, doesn't like the camera, that's all right. Um, so probably, this is probably going to be the last question, unfortunately. That's got, got on you, Chris. Um, most embarrassing moment on or off the green? So yeah. something to do with bowls that's embarrassing, oh, mate, and I'm easy. sure, Briggsy, you'll have a couple. It's easy, mate. The easiest one is... When I was playing up in Brisbane, um, my first pennant game, this dad said to my skip at the time, he said, make sure he puts the stickers on the right side. And obviously, I've put the stickers on the wrong side. Oh, no. First roll up in. First one's on the kitty. Next one's wrong bias. Oh, I'm thinking, fuck. I didn't think I was that bad. Next time, we did the second roll up. First one, fairly close to the kitty. Next one, absolute wrong bias again. Oh, no. And he's looked at me bowl and he said, you've put the fucking 
Stickers. No, you can swear on this, mate. Oh, no, that's right. okay. Yeah. You put the fucking stickers on the wrong side, you goose. So <laughs> that's me most, most embarrassing start to oh. bowls. I've heard some shockers. Yeah. Like, that, the bloke that we had on, yeah, yeah. Uh, Joshy Sanders, he said he fell over one day, threw it six feet in the air, and it landed six feet in front of him. Oh, and then my. he said he's dropped four eights. Oh, but shit. to put the stickers on the wrong side of the bowls. Yeah, very embarrassing it was. And Dad picked it. He said, make sure you put the fucking stickers on the right side, but nah. Oh, no. I still fucked it up. So, anyway, but I've improved since. Just a touch. Just a touch, mate. Yeah. Just no good today. Yeah, no good today. All right, well, thanks, Briggsy. Good on you. Appreciate thanks, it, mate. Good no, on thanks you, mate. for having me. And we'll see you on the next episode of Matt's Jacks and Balls. And I'll be watching. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, mate. There we go. Pretty painless. Yeah, no problem. Oh, natural cock, natural cock. Wait, so you could have been in that too. There's nothing. Yeah, too I made the decision not to leave. Yeah. Well, fuck that many hits that you won't fucking leave. G'day everyone and welcome to another episode of You Know What It Is. 